The Sharp Edge on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Mazic Seeds. Werner Tobin back with another episode of The Sharp Edge, joined as usual by Greg Stewart, Mazix agronomist. Greg, how's it going? Good, Byrne. How are you? I'm pretty good. Hey, we are today at the Mazix site at the Outdoor Farm Show here in Woodstock. And lots of stuff going on here, lots of information. What's happening? So this was the final event for the Great Ontario Yield Tour 2022 version. And so we've had lots of demos today and we talked about what we think the yield's going to be. And so it's been a fun day here at Woodstock. Yeah. And we're also shooting an episode of The Sharp Edge. Now, when it comes to corn management and agronomy, I don't think there's anybody sharper than our guest today, Ken Ferry. Absolutely. So it was a privilege to have Ken Ferry up here at the, at the tour and for him to give us a little bit of time to talk on The Sharp Edge. And we focused in on one of Ken's fortes, which is understanding the characteristics of a hybrid and how you take those characteristics and make them work on your farm. Here's Ken Ferry. Hey Ken, thanks so much for being here today. You've done a really nice job in discussing with us how to characterize hybrids. What are some of the key things that you look for in getting a hybrid characterized for a farm? Trying to get the grower to understand that there is differences between those hybrids is probably step one, so they don't think they're all the same. Just like today at this plot, we got short, tall, medium, high hybrids. Uh, so we got a, a lot of variety or differences out here. When it comes to picking a hybrid, one of the first things we look at is leaf structure. Um, is this an open architecture structure or is it an upright structure? As a good rule of thumb, uh, you know, hybrids that are pendulum in nature are more protective, more defensive when it comes to water. Uh, hybrids that are more upright in nature are, tend to have more horsepower. A situation where they can ring the bell with higher yields part because they're collecting more sunlight where the pendulum hybrids tend to capture the sunlight early and push in populations and pendulum hybrids usually doesn't push yield where the upright hybrids capture more sunlight and we can go after yield with higher plant populations assuming we got the water and the nutrients to back that up. Awesome so I'm going to give you a couple of case studies that sort of fit into our Ontario landscape. Uh, case study number one is a grower that's on a sandy loam soil pretty good operator doesn't really run out of water in May and June much, but often in these fields, when he gets into August and September, even under average precipitation, his number one risk seems that he's just running out of gas from a water perspective. What does that guy look for in a hybrid? So for that guy, you, you take it a step further. Not only do we look at leaf structure, um, we also look at uh, how the ears flex. So, so for some of our hybrids out there today, they, they flex in kernel number. So they're gonna flex in girth and length if they're under stress. Other hybrids flex in uh, depth. Now that depth, the flex that we're talking about comes the last 30 days of grain fill. So for somebody who has a tendency to run out of water at the back end of grain fill, we gotta be careful with those hybrids because that's when they should be shining and that's when you need the moisture. So for that grower, he's gonna pick a pendulum to semi-pendulum hybrid to capture all the sunlight at low populations so he can lower his population for water management. He's probably gonna to wanna to stay away from a hybrid that gets most of its yield punch from depth if that comes at the time of the year when he traditionally runs out of water. So then he would stick more to a hybrid that's gonna um, set its yield based on kernel count and the depth of the kernel isn't gonna change. So again, trying to farm around that weak spot in his lineup when he's gonna run out of water at the back end. Excellent, so case study number two we're going to just go to a grower close by here, uh, Oxford County, Ontario, some pretty sweet ground. This grower thinks that nothing really limits him. He's running 250 to 275 on corn yields. What does he look for in terms of hybrid selection? So in that situation, he has um, the sun and, and a lot of water to work with as long as he follows up with the nutrients. We're probably going to suggest that he goes to an upright leaf structure. Uh, something that can harvest a lot of sunlight and then go ahead and push those populations up. He, he again is probably going to have to be conscientious of the variety to make sure it can handle high populations for the kernel set. But we're kind of swinging for the fences there. We want to capture the sunlight. We want to also uh, fill in the starch as far as where it is. So finding a more, if you want to call it, determinate hybrid that doesn't dump a lot of kernels is probably a good place for him to be there. Uh, and then 
again staying away from the pendulum to semi pendulum type hybrids because he wants to harvest more sunlight with that higher population. So at Mazex, we have a pretty interesting time looking at our hybrids. Maybe, maybe not in some of the detail that you've perfected, but we certainly like to characterize our hybrids in terms of ones that are sort of kernel number driven versus ones that seem to give us their yield out of heavy kernel mass. And I know you've commented about that, but just share with us a couple of ideas around, you know, hybrids and how things are changing with hybrids that seem to give you so much of their top end yield out of kernel mass. So those hybrids that give it out of mass again, and, and you, it, you realize that that all comes in the last 30 days of grain fill. So from from tassel to black layer, typically 60 days. Right. The last 30 days is very, very important for that uh, line of genetics. So um, we want to do everything we can to keep those hybrids alive and green well into black layer. So a situation where that's where we would throw maybe late season and on it, we'd throw fungicide at it. We sure wouldn't slow down on the watering if we're watering it. We want to keep that thing as green as long as we can in that situation to take advantage of it. Even after you do all that though, if you were to have the last 30 days to be smoke or smog or cloud cover um, or anything like that, that would not give you a good ET day, you're going to be disappointed. So as you look at those hybrids, you got to remember what was September like, because September can make or break that hybrid uh, and really pump pump the kernels out. So um, it, it it's kind of how well the farmer thinks he can handle the back end of that season. How can he keep it alive and keep it going? Right. Versus the number side of that, some of these hybrids flex more in girth than they do anything else. So those hybrids have to be protected from emergence up through about V6 or you could lose kernels that, um, you know, just due to cold weather and that type of thing. And those that flex in length, we have to make sure that the plant is happy, you know, through the rapid growth stage. One of the reasons why we say, you know, if you don't know what you're growing, farm so the corn never has a bad day. Just keep it flat out cranking all the way through. Right on. Um, but the the grower's ability to keep that stay green in that hybrid is going to make a difference in whether they're going to be successful with the hybrid that gets it in mass. Right. Hey, some really great insights, Ken. It's been so nice to have you up in Ontario. Thanks so much. You bet. So there you have it. Greg, a lot of stuff there. I mean, like so much to consider when picking a hybrid. You know, flex hybrids, pendulum ears, upright. You know, Ken talked about a lot of those characteristics that growers have to consider, but he made it local, brought it right down to the soil. Yeah, yeah, and I think that is sort of one of the interesting dynamics that you can sit and listen to Ken Ferry and you say, dang, I'm never gonna figure that out. There's seven words in there that I'm not even sure I can pronounce correctly, right? But in this situation, we could take a grower that's got low water holding capacity mm -hmm. soils, usually runs out of water this time of year, yeah. and he gave us some pretty distinct things to look for in terms of what hybrid could do better in that situation. And similarly, another example of a guy that's got big soil, mm -hmm. big water holding capacity, big fertility. And so it's nice to be able to take the theory okay. of the hybrid characterization and like you say, get it right into the ground, some things that we could apply, check, try test. Well, well, Greg, another great episode of the Sharp Edge. We will see you next time.